Last time we saw some cool features of Exponential FM, but we also saw some of its limitations, especially the fact that it cannot keep the original oscillator's pitch and that its sidebands are quite hard to calculate. However, there is another way of doing frequency modulation that overcomes these limitations, which is the linear FM. Coming up. This is our exponential FM diagram. Remember, if we modulate a sound's frequency by one octave up and one octave down, we double the frequency while going up and half while going down. The same is true for any other musical interval within the corresponding ratio. This causes the pitch to increase, since the average frequency between two A's, two octaves apart from each other, is higher than the A which sits in the middle. Suppose that we want to keep our frequency to 440 Hz. In that case, we need to modulate the frequency by the same amount up and down. In other words, we must have the same frequency deviation above and below our carrier frequency. For example, plus and minus 220 Hz, or 100, or 400, and so on. This technique is called linear FM because the frequency modulation changes our pitch by hertz, not by a musical interval, so it follows a linear progression. Linear FM is a concept which is best implemented in the digital world, mainly thanks to John Choning's extensive research. In his 1973 paper, John Choning first applied some well-known radio transmission techniques to the generation of audio signal and to the modulation of their sonic spectra. We can easily say that uh, the concept is the same as of exponential FM, and the only difference is the way the modulation is applied to the carrier but it is a huge difference. The two major outcomes of linear FM are that the frequency of the carrier oscillator no longer drifts while changing its pitch and that the sidebands are more predictable and easier to calculate. Let's start from the sidebands. In linear FM, the sidebands are the sum and the difference of the carrier and all the integer multiples of the modulator. The number of modulators integer multiples we need to take into account depends on the modulation amount, which we will see in a minute. Now, this is fairly easy on paper and it is also quite easy in digital synthesizer, but in the analog domain we have a couple of issues to deal with. The first one is that analog oscillators will never have the mathematical precision of their digital Digital relatives. But this is not necessarily an issue, since uh, more often than not, this is the actual reason we love analog oscillators. The other one is more relevant and has to do with negative frequencies. So sometimes, while we are doing maths for calculating the sidebands, we might stumble upon negative numbers. Even if it sounds odd, don't panic. A negative frequency is interpreted as the main frequency with inverted phase. Again, this is quite easy to grasp and also fairly easy to program on a computer, but with analog oscillators we have some issues. Whenever we modulate a classic analog oscillator down to 0 Hz, it simply stalls and outputs a DC signal. So we can say that classic analog oscillator cannot go below 0 Hz, or in other terms, they cannot keep oscillating with inverted phase. So whenever we do linear FM on such kind of oscillator, we lose all the negative sidebands and all the harmonic content associated with them. However, over the last years, some analog oscillators were able to implement a circuit that allowed the core to jump back in and play those negative frequencies as regular ones. We often call these oscillators through zero because they are able of passing the zero hertz threshold and keep spinning with inverted phase as per Choning's research. Brainso is one of those and it can guarantee analog linear FM in its purest form. So to use Chris Meyer's words, through zero linear FM is basically linear FM that just works. Linear FM allows us to introduce three more concepts of FM synthesis. Deviation, index and ratio. We call deviation the difference in hertz between the default carrier frequency and the highest or lowest frequency that the modulator makes it reach. Since we are doing linear FM, we can be sure that this difference is the same above and below the carrier frequency. For example, if we have a carrier frequency of 440 Hz and a deviation of 200 Hz, our carrier's frequency will modulate between 640 Hz and 240 Hz. The rate at which it will modulate between those two extremes is the very modulator's frequency. The relationship between deviation and modulator's frequency is a number called modulation index. In this example, if the modulator had a frequency of 220 Hz, the index would be 220 divided by 200, which is 1.1. In many FM synthesizers, either digital or analog, one defines the modulation amount by changing the FM index. 
However, on the brainstorm we choose to work with the deviation parameter instead. Let's see why. So let's make the previous example even more manageable with a modulation index of 2. If our modulator frequency is 220Hz, the deviation would be 440. Now, if we play a note an octave higher and we change both the carrier and the modulator, the modulator will now be 440Hz. Since our modulation index is still 2, the deviation amount is now 880Hz, twice as before. If we play an octave higher, the deviation would be 1760Hz, and so on. A consequence of defining the modulation amount through the FM index is that the higher we go, the wider becomes the deviation. In some cases, this may lead to sharp sounds very rich in high frequencies. On the other hand, by defining the modulation amount through the deviation parameter, we have a broader modulation amount in lower notes and a thinner one on higher notes. In the previous example, if we keep a steady deviation of 440 Hz, we will have a modulation index of 2, at a modulator's frequency of 220 Hz, 1 at 440 Hz, and 0.5 at 880, and so on. On the brain saw, the main parameter is the deviation knob, which is voltage controllable. Then we have two FM inputs, one for exponential and one for linear through zero FM. We can patch any sound to these inputs, but the other oscillator's sine wave is routed to them by default. These two knobs are attenuators. They can scale the amplitude of the incoming signal before routing it to the FM circuit. Once we defined it, we can activate the modulation amount through the deviation knob. The circuit works with millivolt per hertz. One millivolt equals one hertz of deviation up and down from the carrier's frequency, one volt to a thousand hertz, and so on. In this way, the bass line will be sharp and rich, and the higher notes will be mellower. Being the deviation parameters CV controllable, we can achieve some interesting sounds by modulating it with envelopes or LFOs. If we use an envelope with a fast attack and a slow decay, we have a plucked sound, like uh, striking a glass. In this case, we used Falistri's yellow unipolar output to change the deviation amount and its uh, integrated version to control the overall amplitude. By doing so, we will have a slightly longer tail without any modulation. If we make our attack slower, it seems like we are stroking the glass rim with our finger. This dynamic modulation was the original idea behind the first digital implementations of linear FM synthesis. It allows us to achieve sound spectra that evolve over time and get closer to how acoustic musical instruments generate their distinctive timbres. The other concept we must explore with Linear FM is the ratio between the carrier and the modulator oscillators. If such a ratio is an integer number, the resulting sound will have harmonic overtones. If the two oscillators are in a harmonic relationship, the result will be harmonic. A harmonic relationship is when an oscillator's frequency is an integer multiple of the other oscillator's one like uh, two times, uh, three times, four times, and so on. Remember the formula to calculate the sidebands? When the two oscillators are in a harmonic relationship, we will have harmonic overtones across all the sidebands. This is not the case when the relationship between two oscillators is inharmonic, or when their ratio cannot be expressed by an integer number. Let's see a couple of examples. In this case, we tuned our carrier oscillator to 440 Hz and our modulator to 220. The ratio is thus 2 to 1. We can increase the deviation amount and hear that the new overtones are still consonant. We may experience on the tuning because after all this is an analog oscillator, so we may need to adjust the fine tune of the oscillators as we increase the modulation amount. If we set both oscillators to the same frequency, the ratio would be 1 to 1 different timbre and yet still consonant intervals. We can play with any ratio like 0.5 to 1, 3 to 1 or 1 to 5 and still obtain consonant sidebands. If the ratio is a non-integer number, the new overtones will be dissonant. However, this is not an issue since they often can lead to interesting bell-like timbres. Since we are doing linear FM, even if the note is dissonant, the carrier is always playable. So far, we used the sine waves as carrier and modulator, taking advantage of Brainsaw's internal semi-normalization. A 
this point, we can also experiment with other carrier and modulator waveforms and see how the sound becomes richer. This is because now we calculate the sidebands for each overtone of the carrier and the modulator's frequencies. Please remember, however, that the Brenso is a triangle core oscillator, so the carrier waveform is always a triangle. We then shape it to obtain other waveforms, such as a sine or a square wave, but we are not technically doing FM with a sine or with a square wave. If we use our final output, we can add further modulation on top of the FM, like wave shaping, wave folding, amplitude modulation or ring modulation. Of course, all of them at the same time might be a little bit over the top, so we can program some Usta tracks to bring the modulations in and out. For example, in this patch we set two tracks of the Usta sequencer to output four raw CVs. One is high, while the other three are low, like four synchronized envelopes. First, CBA of track 3 opens the FM deviation and brings in the FM. Then it closes it while its CVB opens the timber modulation bus and closes it again. Then, CBA of track 4 brings the ring modulation in. And finally, CVB of track 4 changes the wave folder source. We can also experiment with different timbers and combinations. Finally, a closing consideration. Just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so through zero FM is in the core of the carrier oscillator. Both Brinsos oscillators have through zero cores, so we can use any external oscillator to modulate them and obtain two through zero FM melodies. We just have to duplicate their respective CVs with the 333 and then override the internal semi normalization. In this patch, we used Falistri, but anything will do. This is it for today and I'll see you next time.